I'm not ready. Welcome to Night Beans Guys Fitness. And we're cooking up breakfast. So first we're gonna start with heating the cast iron pan warm. And then what I will do is I will put a little bit of bacon grease in it. Pre-season the pan even though I'm going to be cooking bacon in it. That's just crazy talk. But that is how we do things. So while it's warming up, the grease will get in there, it'll coat. So when I'm baking on it, less likely for it to stick. Remember, we never use dish soap to clean cast iron. We use hot water. You can use a, a scrubbing pad. But what I will do is I will put salt so i will take a bunch of salt use it as my abrasive and a little olive oil and then use a paper towel to use it as kind of a sandpaper and then rinse it out with hot water a few times and then dry it on here so it's, it keeps the seasoning when you use dish soap you take the seasoning out of your cast iron which is not good so while we're letting that heat up We'll get the bacon ready. Now that we got the pan warm, what we're going to do is now we're going to put the bacon on there. The bacon I get from Hy-Vee. Yeah, it's high quality bacon. And it's bourbon from brown sugar. Now some of this has got a lot of fat in it and some has a lot of meat. But it's better to get it from the butcher. Your bacon tends to be a bit of high quality. It doesn't have all those preservatives in it that you get from the ones that you buy pre-packaged because they don't know when you're actually going to be using it. You can also freeze bacon and it makes it uh, really easy to store it. So I will only go to the store, I buy two pounds for the fridge and then I buy about four to six pounds for the freezer so I don't make it out that way often and then uh, that usually lasts me the whole month so we're going to get the bacon cooking here and give us a base so we want to get the pan hot and then we're going to knock it back down to a low heat heat now only about cast iron once it gets the temperature it's easy to maintain it at a lower heat. And you get less hot spots than you do with other cookware. So I always start out at a medium heat, <coughs> get the first sear going, and then I kick it down to low. Especially these burners are very powerful. I mean, even my standard burner is almost a power burner. And this one is your like medium power one, which is the strong, or if not stronger than the power burner the stove I had before. And I got a big monster one over here. Yeah, this one I use for boiling water only. So the bacon is great for <clears throat> the cooking medium to cook everything. It's adding flavor. And then I will add it back into the eggs. Uh, once I get to that point. So basically we're gonna do bacon. I'm gonna do some ham slices in there also. Then I'll add to, just before I put the eggs in, just so I get like a, a quick sear. And then we're gonna sprinkle cheese on top. If my garden was still in full swing, I would be adding green peppers to it. And I still do have some jalapenos. And I can put in if I do so decide, but uh, pretty much the growing season is over. There's much sadness, but I did get the extended all the way up to almost the 1st of November with the addition of a greenhouse that I made converting my swing set. So we got that cooking up really nice. <clears throat> we'll flip it a few more times and uh, pull it out. And then go on for the next set here. So the thing to do is to turn it. 
And then as the smaller pieces of bacon are getting done, I will pull them out and put them on a cloth to kind of drain some of the grease out of them. And uh, it just makes it easier to break it up later. And then I'll move the outside pieces into the center and get them cooked. Meanwhile, I have uh, chopped up some hot dogs I'm going to throw in there. That'll be the next thing I throw in. And then I'll chop up some sliced ham. And then I will throw the eggs over it and the cheese and mix it up and we will be ready to eat. So we're using the incredible edible egg. And a lot of times I like to pre-mix them in there. So you buy them from the store or as in this case, I get them from the neighbor down the road. They're a little fresher. I'll sit there and mix it up. Put my sacred spices in there. This really looks like salt and pepper. And I'll stir that up. But first, let's uh, pull some of the bacon off. Smaller pieces do cook faster. Stay with it. You know, right towards the end, it'll cook rather quickly. Now, sometimes you can add milk to this, make it a little bit more fluffy, but uh, I generally don't. Sometimes, if you're serving a lot of people, add milk to it helps it go a little bit further. But I'll be drinking the milk separately anyway, so it's not something I'm concerned about. So you see how fast it's <coughs> really browning up. Especially when you've got the, the grease pretty warm. And you just want the bacon to be kind of a little easier to tear after it sets for a little bit to put back into the eggs. There we go. So the next thing we're going to add is uh, some hot dogs. And then as I get the hot dogs in there, I'm going to chop up the ham. So you really can't see me doing, but you'll see the finishing on it. And so it's kind of like an omelet, it's up. I'm not going to worry about flipping it over and making it look all neat. I'm just going to kind of have it all in there all at once. One thing about the ham, the hams are pretty cooked. The hot dogs are really pre-cooked. Can't stand the heat. Stay out the kitchen. There's always the edge of too many cooks in the kitchen. Spoils the stew. So generally when I cook, I like to like this to be me in here. And really, all I'm doing is just trying to heat them up so it doesn't have to be in there that long. <coughs> it's not like I'm, I really need to cook the hot dogs. Like I said, you're, when you're doing hot dogs, you're just warming them up. And then with the baking grease, is also adding flavor to it. And it don't take long. side brown just for a little bit of uniformity big word 
There we go. Now I got them the way I want them. I got the ham that I sliced up. I'm gonna dump that in there. Same thing, just kind of stir it around. I'm trying to get them to, to separate. I gotta keep them separated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And later on today, we'll be out at the outpost. One of my favorite places. Out in Utica, Illinois. If you're in Utica, Illinois, you need to stop at the outpost. And tell them I sent you. You'll be happy. We'll say hi to Tracy and Jane. You can see there's a couple of those little thick ones I'm trying to break up here still. There we go. Now, got that going. Let's pour in the eggs. So this was eight eggs, six grams, protein per egg, that's 48 grams of protein, probably another 12 grams, and just the meats I did at 60, a little bit more of the special spices. I use the sea salts and the Himalayan salts because Besides the sodium chloride, they also have trace elements in there that are good. And this is when I turn the bacon back into there by breaking up beady, beady pieces. So we'll call this a meat lovers. Egg out. Now, like I said, when the garden's growing, there would be peppers in here. I would chop up a whole green pepper and a jalapeno one to add in here too. And it's good. There, got the, got the bacon all in there. Next, we had the cheese. So I got mild cheddar. Protein and lots of lovely flavors. <clears throat> and here comes the part I'm never really good at. You know, I always like to be able to just flip it over, but I'll tell you, it just it never works out well for me. So a lot of times I just stir it up. Still gets cooked. And it's healthy for you. And it helps the eggs cook better. So you see how it's not sticking to the cast iron? So I have a good seasoning on it. Now the trick is you gotta keep moving it fast. Because it does want to stick to it. This is not Teflon, this is cast iron. But this is cast iron I have polished over the decades. I've had this for over 30 years, and I do think I got this one from my mom. So it's probably a 50-year-old pan. All those flavors mixed in there. Like I said, I'd love to have the green peppers. And then when you get close, what I'll do is I'll actually turn the heat off. And 
finish the eggs with just the residual heat from the cast iron. That means it's a lot of stirring. You can see how it's not sticking to the pan. Now, if I would have washed this in dish soap, that would be attaching to it big time. Might need a little more heat. There we go. And lots of good nutrition there. Lots of protein. You want to start day off heavy in protein. You want to start off with a good amount of calories to get your day moving. And generally this is my second breakfast. I usually have a pretty heavy shake in the morning, which will consist of milk, uh, white beaner, protein powder, and two or three eggs that I'll throw in. And that's just to get my day started. And then I'll go for a walk, which I've already done. And then we'll come back and we'll make the main breakfast. And then we're gonna go down to Utica and have lunch there, along with some couple cocktails, and they'll probably have some live music. And it's sunny. And just a good day to be out there enjoying life. Remember, life is too short to not be outdoors and enjoying it. So all you out there marching for a cause that you know nothing about, this is what you're missing. You could be eating good food, you go out and be enjoying life with friends, with family. Be less stressed and be happy. And that's how I choose to do it. That's the way veterans have fun.